What news do you have for us, Andrew? Well, I've got a couple of things that I uh, came across. It might not be the most surprising thing to you, but uh, I have some things that I'd love to share if you don't mind sharing my screen. Yeah, I will. I'm just going to connect this one first and then <laughs> see if I can get yours up and running with... There. There we are. All right. That looks, that looks like, like yours. Yes, it does. Uh, first thing I have up here is uh, a little while back we um, shared that uh, Uger Cook had put together a little tool called uh, the Intune Assignment Checker. Um, noticed earlier this week that he released a uh, 2.0 version of the script uh, that fixed a couple of issues that had been reported as well as uh, switched over to certificate-based authentication for a little bit more security, which I think makes sense given the tool. Uh, you do provide it quite a bit of read permissions um, in graph. So uh, nice update there. Wanted to make sure I shared that. Um, also came across a pretty cool blog post from Damien. Um, I feel like we've been talking about... Uh, local admins uh, <laughs> quite a bit over the last few weeks. And Damien uh, came up with a, a new script here um, that can be used as a remediation in Intune where you can specify a number of authorized local admin accounts or what you deem as authorized local admin accounts in a detection script as part of a remediation in Intune. And if there are additional local admin accounts that get added to the local admins group, you can go ahead and remove them with a um, uh, remediation script. Um, so again, nice, clever, easy to use um, script here put together from Damien. Uh, great stuff. And he does have a couple of links here down at the bottom where he has uh, posts on uh, dashboards to monitor those local admin accounts as well as alerts when they've been found on the devices. So if you don't wanna go quite as far as automatically removing them, he has a couple of other blog posts here uh, that I recommend you check out. I also came across a new update from our good friend Jorgen on customizing the taskbar and start uh, menu in 23H2 with PowerShell. Uh, a couple of things uh, that he added in here was removing search as well as the removal of the co-pilot icon in the taskbar uh, with this PowerShell script. Um, <laughs> this, this kind of uh, cracked me up because this seems to be fairly common if you want to customize the operating system these days. The uh, search removal is fixed, but a little dirty in the script there. Um, but... Uh, yet again, Jorgen comes out with a solution for this customization, so really good stuff there. Um, last but not least, I also came across an update. I believe we've shared this page in the past, um, but we have definitely shared a lot of resources from Merrill Fernando from Microsoft. Puts together a number of other um, really community-driven uh, web pages, um, but obviously they are focused around uh, things like Graph. Um, he's done Graph X ray, uh, CMD.ms, a couple of the tools that he's got up here at the top. Um, but this one in particular, the Microsoft Graph Permissions Explorer. Um, uh, so, in, in his words, the Microsoft Docs don't actually provide a consolidated view of all of the Graph APIs and the objects for a given graph permission. Uh, so he is parsing all of the Microsoft Learn docs based on uh, graph API um, and merging it with the API to automatically generate this site, uh, which is very cool. Makes it easy to navigate, uh, makes it easy to find what you need, or at least easier. And some of the updates he made, um, I know one in particular that I caught, was if we click on a specific permission. Uh, let's go with one of the device management ones. Device management manage devices, which are in tune device objects in Microsoft Graph. 
when you click on this, so the website had a little bit of a facelift, a little bit of a UI update. Um, and a couple of other things that he's changed here. But one thing that he pointed out was that he added these icons here next to each um, endpoint to tell you whether or not a specific permission will be able to provide you delegated access. So you're connecting and um, uh, working with Graph on behalf of a user or the app only access permissions where you can automate things and sort of work through on a silent uh, basis. And so I happen to pick one that basically everything has delegated and app only permissions. Uh, let me see if I can find, here we go. So when I click on directory read write all, you can see here some of these permissions are only delegated permissions, meaning that we could not automate using app uh, an app registration, uh, automate any scripts against these particular um, methods here. Um, but this is, I, I thought this was a fantastic addition. Um, again, great resource if you want to browse around and figure out what you need within the Graph API. Um, I know there's a lot of information in there and there's a lot of things that you might assume you can do, um, but maybe there's a limitation for these types of permissions. So I caught that as well, uh, figured it would be worth sharing. Um, and again, I would, I would also recommend checking out Merrill's other uh, solutions up here at the top of this page uh, as well. Very useful stuff. So that's what I had on my list today, sir. All right, I did stumble across a few things. So let me go ahead and figure out how to switch screens. Platform we're using decided to do an upgrade today, and I just noticed when <laughs> logging so, in, it's like, okay, surprise. <laughs> oh, whoa. Where did the stuff go? Well, uh, this looks like my computer. All right. Yep. We are on track. Um, first one was a beautiful little post from our friends over at Patch My PC. Uh, just a, an article for people that are, are new to PowerShell and wanted to, to learn about PowerShell. And here's a little summary on what a PowerShell script is or rather what writing a PowerShell script is all about. So hand a little um, post, I figured we could share that one. Uh, Very nice. Beautiful written. And then I doubt that anyone missed the 4,000 emails that came out earlier this week from all sorts of sources regarding uh, the MFA <laughs> enforcement that kicks in in October. Uh, October 15, to be specific. And long story short, uh, it's for the good, obviously. But if your organization, for whatever reason, uh, cannot do it right now, there is an option to apply to postpone that enforcement. Uh, don't know what the process looks like, but I saw the link right there. So I think it would be worth sharing. And then finally, I stumbled across a thread um, on Twitter or X regarding autopilot and hybrid join. Uh, usually when, when you hear those two words in the same sentence, uh, a good solution is to run in an opposite direction uh, very quickly. So, uh, But in this case, that organization actually have to use so that they didn't have a choice and they were struggling getting it reliable. And... Uh, someone shared this little utility or, or workaround or solution in it. Because one of the challenges with uh, hybrid and autopilot is that we have multiple, multiple connectors involved and they all need to be synced in a timely order during that entire process. Otherwise, the, the enrollment will never kick in eventually on, on the client. So... Um, we do share this link here. Uh, it's a nice solution uh, being developed that, uh, from a scripted approach, allowed to put in a lot of validations and trigger syncs when needed for this process. So, 
Uh, and I like the title too. Uh, wouldn't necessarily <laughs> put joy in the same word as autopilot either, but since the author's name is <laughs> Joy Malia, I figured, all right, that, that, that would be a valid exception, I think. Uh, so That's good. Yeah. So that was all that, that I had at the moment in terms of news. And uh, I didn't think we had a... Yeah, go ahead, sir. I, I was just going to say, I, I remembered that, I don't know if you had come across this or if any anyone else that's joining us today that had come across this, but I did see some um, uh, issues with uh, the August CU and Server 2019. Uh, have you come across any of those issues where folks are having to uh, roll back the patch, uh, delete files in the cat root two folder, a uh, bunch of strange stuff. No, but I had a boot image that I didn't quite like that I patched with the August media, but I haven't really gone to the root cause of that yet. Uh, okay. Try to patch a, a Windows 11 22H2 boot image. So the 2261 build uh, worked beautiful with June or July, but August it did not approve of. So either I messed my script up or something else at a play. So, well, we'll see. Troubleshooting in progress. Yeah, definitely. 